animals that have gone extinct in the last decade. When we talk about nature and animals going extinct, does it tick in your mind why they are going extinct? Human activities have long been impacting our environment and the climate, both of which cause animal extinction. We humans do not realize how our activities are destroying the animal population. When we hear the word extinction, we think of animals that went extinct 30 to 40 years ago. Sadly, that's not true. Yes, we have several reserves and sanctuaries, but we still haven't cleaned up our acts. We have animals continuing to go extinct, and the ones we're going to talk about went extinct in just the last decade. First, Lonesome George. A beloved turtle discovered in 1972 by a Hungarian biologist on the Galapagos island of Pinta. Isn't it an odd name for a turtle? Well, he was called Lonesome because he was thought to be the last of his kind on the planet, and scientists believe he had already lived for almost 100 years. When he died, he was found in his corral by a park custodian, Fausto Gerena. The cause of his death is unknown. It could be natural causes, but the Pinta Island tortoise has a lifespan of 200 years. By that logic, George was only a young adult. Galapagos National Park Authority said they would perform a post-mortem to identify the cause of his death. Lonesome George became renowned as the world's rarest animal with no progeny and no known members of his subspecies left. But the story of pigeons will certainly pull at your heartstrings. I know many of us despise pigeons for being noisy and crowding every street, but the truth is pigeons are incredibly intelligent birds. The spotted green pigeon, sometimes known as the Liverpool pigeon, is a species of pigeon first identified and named in 1783 by John Latham, who saw two specimens of unknown derivation and a picture of the bird. The pigeon with green spots is almost certainly extinct, and it may have been on the verge of extinction by the time Europeans arrived in its natural habitat around the 1820s, so their extinction has been a long time coming. Some believe they went extinct in the 1820s, and their mentions in books and stories are based on history, but the last one of these birds was actually sighted around 2009. Its cousin, the dodo bird, has quite a heartbreaking story of extinction. The extinct flightless bird of Mauritius is one of three species that comprise the family Raphidae, commonly classified with pigeons in the order of columbiforms, but occasionally isolated as an order. The dodo was wiped out in 1681 when Dutch explorers lured them into their boats and killed them for fresh meat. Similarly, overhunting and habitat devastation drove the passenger pigeon, perhaps one of the world's most common birds, to extinction in 1914, when the world's last passenger pigeon died. We humans managed to bring their population from billions down to zero in just 50 years. The tragic tale of the Pyrenean Ibex, Europe's first extinction event of the 2000s, is a dramatic example of the world's ever-increasing species extinction owing to human cost factors. It can, however, provide us with helpful knowledge about what has to be done to stop this extinction spiral. This subspecies of the Iberian Ibex was only found in the French and Spanish Pyrenees. Its earliest reference in an official written record in 1767 describes it as exceedingly rare. Like many other mountain goats, it was nearly hunted to extinction when their hunting was forbidden in 1913. Neither the establishment of a national park nor a conservation initiative funded by the European Life Program could prevent the death of the Pyrenean Ibex, which was finally declared extinct in the year 2000. However, the narrative of this charismatic species did not end there. A cloning effort was launched immediately with no support from local environmental NGOs. The argument of de-extinction was conceivable even in the absence of additional DNA research. To understand the causes of the Pyrenean Ibex's death, an international team of seven nations created a database of all known museum specimens. It rebuilt the Pyrenean Ibex's demographic history using DNA evidence. Their findings were published in the peer-reviewed open access journal Zoosystematics and Evolution. While the impact of many is uncertain, hunting and illness carried by other animals effectively lowered the number of Pyrenean ibexes due to their influence on an already genetically weaker population. And they were genetically weaker because they had minimal genetic diversity. The inbreeding depression and lower fertility pushed the species beyond the possible numbers, so extinction became inevitable. One of the most famous extinction stories is of the black rhino, and what a difference a century can make. 
At the turn of the 20th century, an estimated 1 million black rhinoceroses from four distinct subspecies roamed the African savannas. By 2001, there were only around 2,300 black rhinos left, with just three subspecies. It's a narrative of greed, apathy, hope, and despair. The western black rhino used to have a pervasive range over the west and central Africa, with populations in modern-day Cameroon, Chad, the Central African Republic, Sudan, and South Sudan, making it the northern African rhino species. Despite having lived in these areas for generations, the western black rhino found itself unsuitable with the 20th century like other rhinos. In the first decades of the century, widespread sport hunting destroyed rhino numbers. Industrial agriculture cleared many historical rhino habitats for fields and communities. Farmers and ranchers at the time considered giant animals like rhinos to be pests and threats to their crops. The slaughter went on. The final nail in the rhino's coffin was driven in the early 1950s, when Mao Zedong advocated traditional Chinese medicine to unite the country he had recently taken over. Even though Chairman Mao did not believe in TCM, he advocated for its adoption over Western medicine. Powdered rhino horn, which was thought to heal anything from fevers to cancer, was one of the numerous cures promoted by China's new medicine. Poachers descended to Africa at that time. Poachers alone murdered 98% of black rhinos between 1960 and 1995, either to supply the new and insatiable demand for TCM or, to a lesser extent, for horns to be used as ritual knife blades in the Middle East. All rhinos were harmed, but the western black rhino, which had already been debilitated by decades of overhunting, took the worst hit. By 1980, the number of western black rhinos was confined to only two countries, Cameroon, which had 110 of them, and Chad, which had just 25. Within 10 years, Chad's western blacks were wiped out. Cameroon has hung on a little longer. In 1991, the country had an estimated 50 western black rhinos, which had plummeted to 35 just a year later. By 1997, the population had shrunk to an estimated 10 rhinos. It would meet the same fate as the Ibexes. But these are not it. Sadly, our destructive habits have spilled out into the seas too, where we have caused the extinction of a species of dolphin. The Baiji dolphin's extinction is the first of a significant animal species in 50 years, entirely due to human activity. We mustn't forget the extinct Baiji and the man-made causes of its demise to benefit the world's surviving river dolphin species. The death of this one-of-a-kind and spectacular river dolphin is a heartbreaking tragedy that we may have avoided. It should be a wake-up call for humans. The Baiji was declared extinct in December 2006, following an intensive, meticulously supervised and exhaustive study of the whole Yangtze River, which failed to find or hear a single Baiji. There have been no confirmed sightings ever since, so the only conclusion we can reach is that the Baiji is extinct and that our race is entirely at fault. The Baiji Lepotes vexillifer depicted a distinct whale, dolphin and porpoise evolutionary history. It was the only living reflection of the Leporidae family. So the loss of the Baiji, a distinct evolutionary dolphin with no close relatives, indicates the loss of an entire extended family of mammals and a massive loss of biodiversity. Now, have you ever thought of bringing back the animals that went extinct? Is it even possible? Science can do its magic and scientists are already working on it. Reviving extinct animals is the lifeblood of science fiction. We can consider Jurassic Park and its zoo of dinosaurs to be the best depiction of the concept. Advances in genetics are making reviving vanished creatures a real possibility. Scientists have previously replicated endangered creatures, and surprisingly, they can now sequence DNA recovered from long-dead extinct animals' bones and corpses. Geneticists, led by Harvard Medical School's George Church, hope to resurrect the woolly mammoth, which went extinct 4,000 years ago and envisions a future where the Tusk Ice Age monster is returned to its original environment. Supporters say that reintroducing the woolly mammoth in a modified form might help repair the fragile Arctic tundra ecology, prevent climate change, and save the endangered Asian elephant, who is a close cousin of the woolly mammoth. However, this process is not without its scientific and moral dilemmas. If you want to learn more about reviving extinct animal species, we have a video all about it. Hopefully, this video explained a little bit about our destructive habits and their impacts on our environment and the animal kingdom. 
While we have made efforts to conserve certain species, animals won't truly be safe until we repair our climate and make hunting punishable by law. Which of these animals that went extinct in the last few years do you want to see scientists bring back? Tell us in the comments below. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell for more animal content. Thanks for watching.